The NHRA is getting drag racing in. And recently they had the Lucas Oil Summer Nationals at Lucas Oil Raceway Park outside of Indianapolis there in Brownsburg, Indiana. And Monday Morning Racer was there on the scene. And this, brought to you by strutmasters.com, is National Event in Review. Next. <laughs> The Summer Nationals lived up to their name. It was definitely a warm weekend, Saturday and Sunday, at the Lucas Oil Summer Nationals. But the competition was hot as well, creating some hot stories from the weekend. Let's dive into those stories right now with the first segment here on Monday Morning Racer, Throttle Whack. <laughs> Ah oh, man, you gotta love a good throttle whack. And right there, it wasn't just one, rather the Leverage Racing Team provided two Nitro throttle whacks. That was awesome to be right there in the pits recording it. Hey, that team, if you're out there and you could support them, they're looking for a little bit of extra support to make Indy 3. And that would be a great team to partner with as they're gelling and moving forward. They have a brand new, freshly licensed driver in Joe Morrison. They barely missed the field, qualifying 17th. So, if you're out there and you're looking to support a drag racing team, check out Leverage Racing. And since they provided two throttle wax, we're going to have two top stories here on Monday Morning Racer with this national event in review. And those two stories are this. In top fuel, no matter what, when they finally do run the finals between Justin Ashley and TJ Zizzo, we will have a first time winner in NHRA top fuel. Zizzo took out Terry Totten, who, by the way, though a small, independent, underfunded team, they've been running extremely consistent there with the strutmasters.com top fueler. They've had a car that has been running 394, 394, 394, basically a nitro machine that it could be a bracket car. They've been out there getting it done, making shows, and being a threat that each team has got to run their best and cannot take a round off. Zizzo continued after round one on to E2 and he put on the trailer Todd Payton who though being the last qualifier in the 16th position did knock off the number one qualifier Clay Milliken. And then in the semifinal matchup Zizzo had to face Terry McMillan, who had been running stellar, running 370s throughout the day and has a car that can definitely lay down a number. But against Zizzo, it was a 383 to his 389, and Zizzo advanced to the finals. I caught up with TJ on Saturday. Here's that interview from him right now. Monday morning racer here at the Summer Nationals here at Lucas Oil Raceway Park. Caught up with TJ Zizzo. TJ first, I gotta stop, ask this before we do anything about drag racing. I love the look of your cars. How do y'all come up with the designs with the Rust-Oleum? First of all, let's go back here a second. You said Summer Nationals, right? Yes. That ain't, that is not a joke at all, man. This is ridiculous <laughs> out here. I see the fans that are in the stands. I see the fans that are walking through our pit area. Our fans are absolutely A1. I mean, they're un real i i have a lady's dad in my pocket right now that i'm going to take for a ride tomorrow very cool which is super cool um he's really small i don't know how he fit in my pocket but his ashes sure did um and that just goes to show you how awesome this sport is um i'm a fan i love this sport i love what what this sport brings but i don't know if i would be sitting in those stands all day sweating bullets with no protection i mean usually you could bring fans or friends inside your pit area and get them a little water or, you know, you could do something, but we, we can't do that right now. And it's a challenge because um, we want to be a fan, fan friendly pit area. And we always are. Answer your question. Um, there's a girl named Nikki that works at Rustoleum. 
that whipped this thing together last year and it looks spectacular. Um, it helps that we own a body shop, so we kind of have an idea of what we're looking for. Um, but she did a great job. That, at first it went to an agency that was charging probably a lot of money, um, and they just couldn't hit it. They had some great ideas, and Nikki kind of took some ideas from that, but she hit it out of the ballpark. It's beautiful. And, you know, having a white car, white uniforms, they really stand out. Definitely. Well, Nikki, thank you. They look great. So, TJ, uh, you've had a, you had a pretty good Indy 1. Looks like Indy 2 is going to be pretty good for you. Qualified 8th right now. What do you think your odds are tomorrow? I love our side of the ladder. You know, last, last weekend we qualified number 5. Um, and we had a tough side of the ladder, regardless, all weekend, all Sunday long. But um, it is truly... Thank you. Seriously, you guys, the best. you guys are the, f the the fantastic ones. I swore. I'm the sorry. Alcohol crew to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys. We appreciate it for sure. One of those Seriously, stellar, awesome fans right there. Right. Um, and I swore. I apologize. Um, but I see I see our round matchups tomorrow, and I'm going to be pretty excited. Although racing at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning will be pretty darn exciting, and then after that. It's anyone's game. It is. Um, we're going to make some adjustments. We made some mistakes today. Um, we'll make some adjustments and be much better tomorrow. TJ, definitely tomorrow I think will be tough once it gets warmer and it's, pro it's going to be warmer from everything we're seeing. Looking back to the Indy Nats, Indy 1, I was in the stands filming. Corey Mack cannot get the car in reverse and you're idling and you're sitting. Take me into the driver's seat. What's going through your mind there in E1 and you're waiting on your competitor or waiting on NHRA to do something? It was a challenge, you know, but I accept challenges all the time. Um, when I knew it was real bad is when I saw our longtime team member, Tony Smith, which has been in front of our car for 27 years, from my vantage point, disappear. He disappeared, like, he never, I never have him out of my sight. Next thing you know, I see him hurdle our car and I'm like, oh boy, what's going on over there? Um, and he was basically just describing to the starter that we needed to go. Um, you know, I guess the only thing I was disappointed in was my reaction time. Um, even with stuff like that going on, I should have still been able to nail the tree. Um, Cause I was nailing the tree all last, all last week. So, um, that's about the only thing I saw as a negative, but to wait there is a little bit of a challenge. It is. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. And that's probably why my reaction time wasn't very good. Well, even with the late reaction time, as you said, or the circumstances of Corey Mack, you know, not being able to get it back in reverse and everything that was going on, the chaos blasted down with a 377. So y'all definitely have got the performance. Thank you've got a good chance on Sunday. T TJ, thank you for your time, for being on the Monday Morning Racer camera. Folks, all this brought to you by strutmasters.com. Thank you. Thank you. The other driver in the finals of the Summer Nationals is Justin Ashley. He makes his first ever NHRA Top Fuel competition final, along with TJ Zizzo doing the same. Justin had a pretty tough Indy 1. He lost first round to Sean Langdon, and it looked like he might have a rough summer nationals as well they qualified 14th in the first round of qualifying they were looking to perform better in the second qualifying run but they do the burnout car backs up begins to move forward to begin the staging process and the car simply died so he stayed at the 14th position on the board matching up with guess who sean langdon which would make it three out of four races that he has raced Sean Langdon in eliminations. Hey, I caught up with Justin after Q2. Here's that interview along with the footage of what did happen.
Monday morning racer still going through the pits, catching up with these drivers after Q1 and Q2. Caught up with Justin Ashley, the strutmasters.com top fueler. Justin, last week, Indy 1 qualified, but got bit in first round by Sean Langdon. Talk to me about last week and coming into this one. More so than anything else with last week, it was just good to be back. Uh, we had a long layoff, so just to get the group of guys back together and be able to hit the racetrack was awesome. And I think overall we had a relatively good weekend. We went out the first lap, uh, went A to B, and, and that ended up being our best run, qualified nine. And unfortunately we fell short in the first round, but we felt like we got a lot of good data that would help carry forward to the race here this weekend. So it was a good start for us overall. And uh, we're out here this weekend again, having a good time. Yes, Summer Nationals here at Lucas Oil Raceway Park, Indy 2, as it's also being known. So, in the show, apparently I think you even got a rematch with Sean Langdon in round one, so you can get him and go one for one. But uh, Q2 was rather interesting. I'm on the line filming, you do your burnout, you back up, and it just dies, man. What happened? Yeah, so Q2 was not exactly what we had expected, but when you're out here long enough, things like that are gonna happen, and that's part of drag racing. It looks like we had a leak uh, in the air bottle. So the safety system automatically shut us off, but you know what, that's okay. Uh, like I had mentioned, it's not something that we expected to happen, but we know we're gonna go through our trials and tribulations. And most importantly, tomorrow round one, that's where it counts. So we'll feel fortunate to be in the show, fortunate to have Strut Masters and all our marketing port partners on board with us. We got Menards on board this weekend. We're ready to go for tomorrow. That's right, new sponsor, Menards Home Improvement on the car. So, how'd that deal work out and uh, how many races is it? What, what's, the, what's the deal? So Menards is going to be an associate sponsor on the car for the remainder of 2020. Uh, we'd obviously love to extend that relationship. Menards has a storied history of success uh, as a retail chain and uh, we just felt like it was a really good match. We're going to continue to work on some B2B initiatives with them uh, and we're excited to have them on the team. Folks. That's Justin Ashley. Justin, thank you for your time. Monday Morning Racer here for strutmasters.com. Justin took down in competition Sean Langdon there in round one. He's now two for one in 2020 over Sean, but the day didn't get any easier. First of all, they did hurt several bullets over the day, but the Davis Motorsports gang kept a decent car up under Justin, and he was able to meet Doug Coletta, yes, Doug Coletta, the points leader at this time by an entire event win in round two. He gets past Doug, then he's got to meet Leah Pruitt in the semifinals, and she has had one bad fast hot rod in a year that she's got the best chance she's ever had to possibly snag an NHRA Mellow Yellow Series Drag Racing Championship. So Justin gets past Sean, Doug, Leah to get into the finals to go up against TJ Zizzo. So Justin and his Davis Motorsports gang and that strutmasters.com top fueler went the hard way to the finals, but they got it done over the competition. But even though TJ Zizzo is in the finals, even though Justin Ashley is in the finals, the real winner of the day was the weather. That brings me to my second top story here on Throttle Whack, and that is how the NHRA handled the postponement and the pushing back of the Summer National Finals and put them with the U.S. Nationals weekend. So if you're one of those fans out there right now that's complaining, why didn't they run them Monday? Oh, this is stupid. Why did the NHRA make this decision? I want you to know the NHRA did not force this decision on the teams. They, in fact, listened to the teams in what they wanted to do. And I know that because I was right there. I'd been hanging out with the Davis Motorsports gang all day, and I was there with them round by round. I was there with them when the rain came. I was there when the NHRA called while they were having a team huddle, and they asked, what do you want to do? And they didn't just ask the Davis Motorsports group for Justin Ashley and strutmasters.com what they wanted to do. They asked all the other teams of all the other classes as well. So, you have that phone call made, the Davis Motorsports Group with Aaron Brooks leading the helm, they're like, hey, let us talk, we'll call you back. And in that time, TJ Zizzo and his team, some representatives, they come over and they begin to talk with Justin Ashley, Mike Ashley, and Aaron Brooks, the rest of the team, what do we need to do to 
finish out this race and crown a winner of the Summer Nationals. So, for TJ Zizzo, it wasn't a possibility to stay over to Monday, nor was it really for Davis Motorsports. And here's why. These teams being part-time teams, they work other jobs. And they needed to be somewhere at their jobs, whatever those jobs are, Monday and Tuesday and be back on the clock. Also, TJ Zizzo had no plans to be back for Indy 3, but be back at the U.S. National. So when everybody had talked and everybody had voted, the NHRA listened and the NHRA said, we're going to go with what you've proposed. Here's the decision. We're going to run your finals and the finals of the other classes at the weekend of the U.S. Nationals. And folks, it may be a ways off, and you might want to find the conclusion of this race sooner, which I would, and the teams would, in fact. Nonetheless, with what happened, with the weather rolling in and not being able to get the rest of the race in, this fit for everyone else, the best case scenario. And I think it works out in the favor of the teams because the U.S. Nationals, the biggest weekend of drag racing in the world, they're going to be able to run their finals for the Summer Nationals at that particular weekend for that event. I think that is going to bring some big exposure for those teams because it will be on that particular stage. I think it's a win-win and I applaud the NHRA. I saw it firsthand. They handled this the right way. And I don't always give the NHRA compliments. I think they have got to do some work for longevity and future sake, but they got this right. They listened to the teams that were in the finals to get the best arrangement for all involved. <laughs>
were huge points implications in this battle because Billy had shot up there along with Steve shooting up to the front because of their wins respectively at the Arizona Nationals and at Indy 1. So this was a huge matchup and you oftentimes think that the teams when they go up against each other in their team cars, the team that has the points lead, well they're going to get the win. Someone's going to take a dive. That did not happen in this case. Steve lost to his dad. He was so hyped up he was the one that didn't do that great of a driving job. He double throttled it and dad wins. Billy Torrance wins over Steve Torrance. Here it is. <laughs> on into the door slammer ranks, Bo Butner makes his Pro Mod debut in the Ricky Smith Pro Mod ride for strutmasters.com. So he steps out of the strutmasters.com Pro Stock into the strutmasters.com Pro Mod and I was able to catch up with Bo there at Indy. Listen to him right now. Monday morning racers, summer nationals, caught up with Bo Butner. Bo, man, you had a cool deal this weekend. Hopped in the big bad Natris Pro Mod for Ricky Smith. Tell me about it. Well, first of all, thanks to Strut Masters. Uh, it gives both of us the uh, opportunity to do this. So uh, it was definitely a, a challenge for me. Got more comfortable when it came time to, uh, to qualify and come time for some eliminations. It's very tough racing. A lot a lot closer than what I thought it was. I know Pro Stock's very close. But these races today are very close, and uh, you can't pick a winner. But uh, it's definitely an animal. All the Pro Stock guys have been hitting me up, wanting to know, hey, how's it feel? What do you think? And all I can say is that about a thousand foot on that first full hit, I started giggling in my helmet because it seems unreal. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, door cars going that fast. I don't think people thought we'd ever get to the point that they are at, but they are. I'm curious, stepping into the Pro Mod, were there any thoughts, any extra precautions on safety or what the cars can and can't do? Any thoughts like that? Well, fortunately, I mean, I'm in a, a new Chevy Camaro, Strut Master's back, so you know it's good parts. Uh, Ricky Smith, he's a man when it comes to these type cars, so felt very safe uh, just letting him coach me, uh, listening. They do drive totally different than a pro stock car, but no, I felt safe. And like I say, uh, you do feel like you're going fast, but it's really, sh you're shocked when you see the ET slip. So Bo, you've experienced two weekends in a row now under a format that the NHRA has been forced to use, this two-day format with two qualifiers. Look, how do you feel about it? Do you, do you think it's something they should even look at in the future of using more often to cut costs and help the teams? I think so. Uh, the two qualifiers make it tough. I mean, it's a whole different ball game. You won't go up there and swing for Q1, but Q1 is usually your best session. So what do you do? Uh, I think teams will adapt. Uh, we're all having to adapt. This is a new world we live in. So whatever it takes to be out here on the track and the fans to be out here to watch our summit, Strut Masters cars, I mean, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to whatever we do next. Definitely, whatever we do next, because things certainly are changing around here in NHRA drag yes. racing, but I'm glad they're working it out and we got drag racing ahead of us. Bo, yes. thank you for your time. Folks, Monday Morning Race for strutmasters.com. That's Bo Butner. Thanks, guys. In other good news from the Summer Nationals, Bob Tasca, who contracted COVID-19, had to sit out Indy 1. He's got a full bill of health and he, there at the Summer Nationals, though in Q2, was actually outside of the qualified field. He rockets down the 1,000 feet and qualifies number one. Mike Neff definitely putting a bad, fast hot rod together for Tasca on his return. And they had a good Sunday as well. He made a semifinal rounds appearance before being taken out. So a good day for Bob Tasca coming back after being down with COVID-19. Also, factory stock, they were in competition at the Summer Nationals. It's awesome to see factory stock. I love that class. And there's a lot in factory stock that I wish NHRA would really take from and apply to NHRA Pro Stock. Now folks, this is my In the Groove News in the comments section. Drop what news, what stories you loved the most from the Summer Nationals.
Class is now in session. Let's take a look at the classes that were in competition one by one at the Summer Nationals there at Lucas Oil Raceway Park. Up first, Top Fuel. In Top Fuel, the points are this, that Doug Coletta is still leading the Top Fuel points just by under an entire event win. He lost some ground, but he had such a stellar points lead going in, he is still way out there in front. Notice this, Leah Pruitt is having her best year ever in top fuel, making a legitimate run with a bad fast hot rod for a NHRA Mellow Yellow Series championship in top fuel. Top fuel is definitely looking racy this year in 2020. Funny car right now should just be known as the Don Schumacher Show. The DSR camp has three out of four cars running exceptionally well. In fact, they're one, two, three in points. Ron Caps right now just does not seem to be able to catch a break. He has met in the first round of competition teammates each time and has lost to them each time at Indy 1 and now Indy 2, the Summer Nationals. So the point situation is this. Fast Jack Beckman does lead it. Tommy Johnson Jr. is second. Matt Hagen is third. But with the matchup in the Summer National Finals being Jack Beckman and Matt Hagen, here's the potential in mind that we have an entire event to run before actually finalizing the finals of the Summer Nationals. Matt Hagen could actually jump over Jack Beckman by a win, or Jack simply extends his lead that he has currently with a win. The fact of the matter is, right now, Don Schumacher Racing definitely has a stranglehold on the funny car class. The fourth man in points is Tim Wilkerson, who has a bad, fast hot rod, but Don Schumacher Racing definitely is running away with the show at the moment. Pro Modified was to have its first race of 2020 at the Gator Nationals, but that was obviously postponed due to COVID-19. So their first race of 2020 was there at Lucas Oil Raceway for the Summer Nationals. And it proved to be an exciting weekend for Pro Mod with just two qualifying attempts and into eliminations. Taking this away from Pro Mod, I think parity right now is better than what people were expecting. In the semifinals, you had each power adder represented in the lanes. Turbo, Nitrous, Supercharger, and Centripetal Supercharger were represented in the semifinals. I think that is pretty cool. So right now, at least right now, it looks like parity in NHRA Pro Mod is there. By the way, another great story for Pro Mod is as with Top Fuel, we are guaranteed first time winners in Pro Mod. Hey, enjoy some footage from the rounds and the action at Lucas Oil Raceway. stock was in competition. Yes, they were supposed to run first just like Pro Mod at the Gator Nationals. Did not happen. They run their first race of 2020 here at the Summer Nationals and I love this class. They always, in my opinion, put on a good show. I love watching these door slammers race it out to the quarter mile. It does seem right now though to be a continuation, a part two, if you would, of 2019. The Varsity Ford team and the Skillman Ford team, well, they made it into the finals and they were dominating over the weekend. Here's some footage from Factory Stock right now.
Racing fan, thank you for watching this in review on the Summer Nationals brought to you by Monday Morning Racer. Let me leave you with this fan tip. If you are in the area going to the drag races and you're looking for good breakfast, I highly recommend a place called Flapjacks. You'll find it in Brownsburg, Indiana, and with a name like Flapjacks, you better have good breakfast, and they certainly did. I was eating with the Davis Motorsports gang and got the two by two, two pancakes, two eggs, along with some bacon, and it was done right. And also, I saw many other dishes of different types for breakfast, and they all looked good as well. Not to mention the service was great. An older lady with a lot of sweeties and babies. Can I get you something else? You gotta love it. Flapjacks for breakfast there in Brownsburg, Indiana. Folks, thank you for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe right here to the Monday Morning Racer. Hey, you got a suspension problem with your air system that is failing you right now? Check out strutmasters.com so you can ride higher. And also, Hero Soap Company. Soap that is all natural, essential oil infused, and when you buy it, proceeds even help veterans groups, and you can get 10% off with promo code MMR and support the channel as well. Thank you for watching, and until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.